G'day, welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm going to explain this to you. Now, if you're an amateur, if you haven't done much algebra, you're probably going to go, oh, let's go and watch some PewDiePie. But no, stay with me because I'll try and explain this. Even if you're not an algebra nut, um, it's really easy. It's much easier than it looks. It was, trust me, at school they were trying to hoodwink you and make it sound complex, but in reality, algebra is super, super simple and I'm gonna show you what this means. I'll start by explaining what the various symbols represent in this. If SPL stands for free space path loss. It's pretty straightforward, isn't it? It's just an acronym, right? And what that means is if you have a transmitter over here and a receiver over here and you beam a little signal, doot, 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 well, it'll be going in all directions. Um, if you transmit from there to there, not all of the signal makes it. I think we understand that, that some of the, most of the signal actually gets lost because normally with the transmitter we're using an omnidirectional antenna so the radiation spreads out in all directions at once. So only a tiny, tiny fraction of the power that comes out of the transmitter makes it to the receiver. And we all know the further away you get, the weaker the signal gets, eventually you run out of range. The receiver can no longer hear the signal over the general noise of the universe. So that's when you run out of range. And if you're flying FPV and it's your video system, you get snow and you can't see the picture. If you're flying, this is your radio control link, then your model goes into failsafe and floats gently to the ground. We all know how that works. Right, and this is the formula that defines it all. It, it calculates how much of the signal is lost between when it leaves here and when it gets to there. So that's critical. The more signal that's lost, the less range you have for a given amount of power. So obviously you want this number to be low. Your path loss needs to be low. And how can we make it low? Well, if we look up here, let's explain what this, this part of the formula is, right? We've got the number four. Who doesn't know what four means? Okay, right, you can go. Now, the rest of you, four, it's just four. It's what we call a constant. It doesn't change. It doesn't have any effect. It's just a constant. And here we have pi, 3.141, I don't know what the rest of it is. I can never remember it. But it also is a constant. Pi is the same today as it will be tomorrow. Now, the price of pi's may go up, but the value remains the same. Pi is also a constant. And one of the cool things about algebra, or when we're trying to work out you know, how the various elements of this formula interact, and because remember, we want to know what this, this is going to be, right? We want to know how these things affect this path loss effectively and how they affect our range. Because as I say, the more path loss, the less range. So we can take away the four and the pi because they don't change, they don't, they don't matter for beans, right? And then we got C, what is C? C is the speed of light, as in E equals MC squared. And again, it doesn't change. It's one of the constants of the universe. C does not change. So. We can take away C, and since we've taken away C, we can take away that line. So this leaves us with two things that are gonna affect our path loss. Distance, <laughs> we know that because the further away you go, the more loss you get until you run out of range. But also F is for frequency. Mm -hmm. So frequency affects range. Ah, isn't that great? Now you can perhaps see why. When we have a long range equipment, long range radio gear, long range FPV, it tends to be at a lower frequency than short range stuff. If you're going to do really long range FPV, you're probably going to use 1.2 gigahertz for your video frequency. And likewise, you're probably going to use 900 megahertz like Crossfire or the FreeSky system, or even 433 for your radio link. Because if you look at it carefully, if these two numbers multiplied together and squared now make the, the path loss. So if we increase the distance, I'll just draw that because a lot of people that aren't algebraic don't realize that there is an implied multiply sign in there. So this is D times F. Distance times frequency, right? So increase the distance. You know, if we just, let's use, so we use a number one times one, okay? So this is the one. One for distance, one for frequency. If we change the distance to two, it becomes two times one. So we've increased distance. Well, two times one is three. So this number here has gone up. 1 times 1 is 1, so we can go 1 equals. 2 times 1 is 2. <laughs> I got that wrong. So as we increase the distance, this free space path loss goes up. But actually, it's interesting because there's one thing that I have yet to take into account. Look, squared. squared. Now, remember I've spoken before about inverse square law and that if you double the distance, you only get quarter the signal. It's a square. Um, and that's what happens here. So. If we, what happens here is if we take one times one and square it, we still get one. But two times one is two, and we square it. So this is actually four. Four. There we go. So as I said before, if we double the distance, we only get our path loss goes up by four. So we're getting only a quarter of the signal. 
Woo, that explains a bit, doesn't it? Right, so that's distance, but let's take a look. Frequency's in there too, so if we increase the frequency, it doesn't quite scale the same as frequency, but let's have a look. If we say um, one times one, or one times two, again, we've got one times two is two, squared is four, so raising the frequency also reduces the range because it increases this path loss. So if we have a nice stable link here at say 2.4 gigahertz, and we then change to 5.8, the signal is going to be lower at this end because we've got a higher path loss because of increased frequency. If we have a nice stable link here and we double the distance, well again, we could lose the signal because the path loss will go up again. Increasing the distance or the frequency will increase the path loss and the path loss is what determines your range. So the, the, the more path loss, the lower your range. So there you go, interesting stuff. So what we can see from this is we need to have the lowest frequency possible to get the maximum range. And that's why we have these low frequencies. Now, um, also I hope that's explained how you can simplify an equation uh, to show you, not, this is, I mean this isn't accurate, d times f, that's not the correct answer because we've missed all this stuff, but it shows you that d and f, if you increase either of them, it increases this number. That's all we need to know for this formula because you don't need to know the absolute values. It's just to give you proof that increasing distance or increasing frequency will increase the free space path loss. And of course, if you wanted to make it um, in decibels, which this isn't, you'd have to put logs in there to convert it to a logarithmic scale, which is what decibels are. But I'm oh, getting too complicated now. So um, I'm going to explain now. What, we know why distance increases the loss, because as you get further away, more of the signal is going elsewhere. So even less of the signal gets to your receiver. But how is it that frequency increases the loss? What's the magic thing that causes increased frequency to produce more loss between the transmitter and receiver? What, why would frequency make a difference? Well, let's have a look. So let's talk about why frequency affects the path loss and thus the range. I've got a couple of antennas here at different frequency. This is a 2.4 gigahertz antenna and it's that long. It's just not drawn to scale. Obviously 2.4 gig antennas are much smaller, but I've magnified it all here so you can see it from the other side of the world through the wonders of YouTube. Right, so let's assume this is a quarter wave 2.4 gigahertz antenna. It is that long. If we go down to 900 megahertz, like the Crossfire and the others, a quarter wave antenna is nearly three times longer. So can you set, perhaps see now why? I mean, understanding how distance uh, increases the amount of signal lost is, is easy enough, but can you see now how frequency affects the amount of signal lost? Well, it's kind of simple, really. This area 10 is nearly three times longer than that one, so it'll get a snot load more signal. It'll pick up more signal from the ether. It's longer. So there's more exposure to the radio waves that are traveling through the ether. So the reason we get a increasing distance with a lower frequency and thus a longer wavelength is because of the antennas. And what do I mean by frequency and wavelength? Well, here's a little graph I've drawn. This is time, and this is a graph up here. This is high frequency. See how that goes up and down really, really fast or quite frequently compared to that? So the wavelength is just the gap between peaks, right? So this, the wavelength here is quite short because the peaks are close together because everything is squeezed up due to the frequency. If we go to a lower frequency, you can see the wavelength is much longer, right? So as frequency goes up, wavelength goes down, wavelength gets shorter. And as the frequency goes down, the wavelength gets longer. And as the wavelength gets longer, say from 2.4 gigahertz going down to 900, the antennas get longer, more metal in the game, more signal picked up, less path loss. That's it. That's the reason why lower frequencies transmit further. The antennas just basically put more energy into the ether and they suck more out. They're just better. Antennas are better at the job at lower frequencies. Ta -da! Simple as that. So um, it's no magic. It's just it's so intuitive. Distance is obvious and so is frequency. It's obvious, isn't it? It's very simple when you look at it. And that formula we showed you initially shows you the two factors and either raising either of them will, either the distance or the frequency, will increase the loss between the transmitter and receiver. And the more loss, the less range. There you go. So this is the start of a series because um, I've been doing some field tests with stuff like this which is a piece of core flute I have put three receivers on. I was comparing the FreeSky systems. I've got the X6R, the L9R, and the R9. It's a 2.4 normal, 2.4 long range, 900 megahertz long range. And of course I went for a walk with this. <laughs> I wasted a whole day because the L9R is faulty out of the box. <laughs> Never mind, that's one of the curses of being a reviewer. So I have to do this all again with a working L9R. This only got about 200 meters range maximum, the L9R, so I think it was faulty. Anyway. I will be redoing this video, uh, showing you the, the distance 
you can get between, you know, which, which, how much difference there is between the three options from the Free Sky. Of course, we've also got the 433 long range systems, which I'll be doing something similar with. And now you can understand why we have long range at 433, way down there, really long antennas, maximum range. We go up to 2.4, shorter antennas, less range. And then we go to 5.8, of course, and we have really, really short antennas and even less range. So that's why you normally, your video disappears before your radio link, if all else is the same, if you're using omnidirectional antennas on either end. That's it for this whiteboard video. More coming on Whiteboard Wednesdays. And if you've got questions, comments, put them in the usual place. I will do my best to answer them. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Any comments, suggestions, I'd love to hear them as for new other videos, but there will be lots more whiteboard stuff on this long range FPV and radio control. Bye for now.